This is Clumsy Castle Combat, a game I made in about two weeks, which is totally not inspired by Clash Royale. Please don't sue me, Supercell. So, if you don't know, Clash Royale is a multiplayer strategy game launched in 2016, which spiked in popularity in 2017. And during that period, others tried to make clones of the game. Some kind of good, some literally the same. I mean, look at this glitch and tell me they don't look similar. And you know what? If those copycats could do it back then, why can't I? Maybe because I don't have any experience in 3D games, this is my second game ever, I never made multiplayer games, and I never 3D model, I don't have a budget. I started by creating the arena, except I was scared of Blender, so I did it manually in Godot. Yay, Godot, open source, we nerdy sounds. Basically, I downloaded a 3D model for the towers, so I could see how to align the camera. I did some UI, if you can even call it that, and added the beam. Then I immobilized the beam through torture, and now it's automatically moving towards the tower. After that, I downloaded Blender and tried to learn it by following the tutorial for creating the bridge in the arena. It ended up quite great, even though it had some imperfections, so I added it into the game. Turns out Blender is just a bunch of keystrokes, so instead of coding the game further, I decided to do some more 3D modeling. I created the tower in about 16 minutes, and at the end I accidentally deleted its interiors, and now it's empty. And that's not a bug, that's a feature. I imported the towers into the game and created the cannons, this time following the tutorial. Now what I want to do is make the towers actually shoot, since the cannon model I made also has animations. So I made the cannons rotate and play the shoot animation when something enters their area. Then stop shooting and rotate back to normal once they leave. Now it's time to make the towers actually shoot. This was pretty easy, since I had some knowledge from my last video. Make a totally sophisticated ball in Blender, import in Godot, make it have collision, make it follow the enemy it was fired at, and despawn it once it hits an enemy. While I was implementing the HP for the troops, I tried dividing 255 by 300 to get the percentage difference. But that operation in Godot equal to zero. That's because integer division is not implemented. And the worst part is, according to this nerd, it's common in Python 2, C and Java. Good thing that I don't touch those. I should have implemented this in Boss in X, except it crashes the whole program. I added some health bars to the troops and made them take damage. They eventually die when their HP is below zero. I also added HP to the towers and made them actually do damage. This was kind of tricky because I'm really, really, really bad at implementing collisions, but eventually I got it working. While implementing the tower's HP and damage, I realized that the current code has its fire based based off shooting the animation length. Which is fine, but for some reason I decided to rewrite it using timeouts. This should be easy, I thought. All I would have to do is connect the tower's fire rate to loop and shoot when it ends. Then I just connect the enemies that enter the zone, except that it does not handle that. Which is fair, you know. It was pretty late at night when I thought of this. Don't judge me. So I tried writing some sort of cache system using arrays inside arrays. It was late, okay, I said don't judge. And I spent a few hours trying to figure out why the towers wouldn't shoot when the current enemy dies. Guess why? I forgot to start the timer. <laughs> now the tower's fire rate is actually accurate. So the way the cards currently work is they move to a marker which I set to be the red tower. But if the red tower is destroyed, the cards just stand there. So I have to rewrite the algorithm which controls where the player moves. And by algorithm, I mean Godot's built-in pathfinding system. I love modern software. Except why. Since the game script seemed pretty competent at handling more troop types, I made the 3D model for the night, which looks very original and different from the game I'm taking inspiration from. After I did the 3D model, I had to add animations for attacking and walking, which would have been an insanely time-consuming task, especially because I have to do this for 8 more cards. But, thanks to the godsend algorithm, I was recommended a video from an amazing fellow which the solution. I'll need to create a rig for the model and then animate it. And that's a lot of work. Fortunately for me, there's a website called Mixomo that can automatically rig your character. I went to test the project to check if it works, if you place the cards as an enemy, and to my surprise it did. Maybe I'm not as bad as a programmer as I thought. Okay, never mind. Because the game is pretty much in a state where I can add any melee troop and have it work automatically, I decided it's time to add multiplayer. This should be easy, right? It's... <laughs> it's not. I tried creating some sort of client-server relation where the server will do everything and the client will act as inputs and be synchronized to what's happening in the server. I did kind of implement this, but then I had to synchronize the clients and just couldn't. I was about to give up, but then I thought, why don't I just use peer-to-peer -peer connection? And I tried, and that didn't work either since you have to deal with ports and stuff. There were some plugins that they were written in Godot 3 and I'm using Godot 4, so I just give up. After all, all those Crash Royale repos that were played in the browser at least, were single player, or just hit it like IO games do. I really wanted to implement multiplayer, but I suppose it's beyond my current experience with Godot. 
I figured we should have a name for the game already. So I asked my Discord server for a name suggestion. Discord server which you should totally join because I send some sneak peeks when I'm feeling hopeless or getting distracted. Someone came with the amazing idea to call the game Clumsy Castle Combat. Amazing because clumsy means awkward in movement or handling things. Perfectly describing the totally original game I'm making. I created this gorgeous model for the Musketeer. Imported some goofy animations and now it's time to write the code for ranged troops. I don't feel like explaining it, it's just a bigger area. I woke up the next day with the urge to rewrite my code to be completely statically typed. For no gosh darn reason. What has Rust done to me? I somehow managed to bend reality and cause an internal software issue with those scripts. I closed the portal by using some random code. Next troop, I made a 3D model for the log, which looks pretty good in my opinion, and if your opinion does not match my opinion, you may want to check your wall. I added the animation myself, oh yeah, you can definitely tell that. And there we go, we now have the log. Next I implemented the logic for making troops fight and follow each other, and added the mini P.E.K.K.A. By that point I was facing an issue. I wanted to implement more troops, but the code I had could only handle single one-shot troops. So I decided to code a bit so we can at least have win conditions working. If you don't know, win conditions are mostly cards that can get reliably to the tower. Or how I'm describing them, troops that don't target other troops, except for buildings. For the first win condition I want to add, unarguably, one of the most skillful cards, the Royal Giant. I created a 3D model which is a bit bigger than usual cards, I did some questionable animations, and there we go, we now have the code for building only cards cards and the royal giant. I had to add 3 more cards in order to create a card rotation in the deck, so I chose the next card to be the dart goblin, even though there are no flying troops at the moment, hell yeah. I added some animations and brought it into the game. Next I added the P.E.K.K.A. Totally not because it's easy to add and there's currently no swarm card to counter it. You know, maybe I shouldn't add it. There's P.E.K.K.A. If it looks slow effort and badly modeled, it is. I did it in 10 minutes this morning. One more card left to add, which will be but under different identity, because I have no idea how to animate non-human models. So welcome Dumb. Dumb has the exact same stats as the Hog Rider, except he's from the Clumsy Castle Combat universe. What the hell am I doing at this point? The 8 cards are done, so what you would expect me to do is implement a deck rotation and elixir. But, since the game is not multiplayer and it's just boring waiting for the elixir to generate, hear me out. How about instead the game acts as a sandbox where you can spam a random crap and press R to restart the sandbox. With that in mind, I added a texture to the water which looks pretty cool, tweaked some more post-processing settings and added a plugin from Godot's asset store which allows you to move the camera anywhere you want. Not gonna lie, this alone made the game feel so much better. <laughs> so the game has no music or sound effects, let's add it. I've got a bunch of audio files for the troop sound effects, split them in different files and added them into the game. I added the main menu, a grid overlay, more sandbox controls, exported the game for Windows, no I'm not going to publish this BS on mobile, and yeah if you want to play it, check it out via the each.io link in the description. Note that the web build is quite broken, so you might want to use the executable version instead. A big thanks to all the patrons and new members for supporting the channel, thanks for watching, and as always, see you in the next one.